G'day everyone, it's Terence Kearns here. What we're going to do today is we're going to make uh, Corel Aftershot Pro a lot more user friendly to Lightroom users. I'm a big fan of Lightroom. I use Lightroom all the time for my professional photography and um, I wouldn't miss it for the world. But I also want to include Corel Aftershot Pro in my workflow and to that end I am going to make Aftershot Pro a bit more like Lightroom. That way um, I'm not going to get so annoyed at having to remember different keyboard shortcuts. Here's just a couple that I've thought of off the top of my head. So these are ones that are, are applicable in Lightroom, um, but not Corel Aftershot Pro. We're going to set those in a minute. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring up Lightroom, which I've got tucked away over here somewhere. Um, bringing it right along. Okay. So if we go into Lightroom and we hold down Control or Command and hit forward slash, we get some keyboard shortcuts. Now, if I bring up my sticky note again, you can see that these are the only ones I'm interested in. But uh, nonetheless, being able to bring up the keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom is a handy trick. So we're going to go back to Aftershots Pro now and we're going to attempt to try and decipher what Aftershots Pro calls all the different um, the different um, features okay because I believe that they're different best thing to do is go to preferences navigate down the keyboard over here I'm just gonna hit the set the default one over there just so we can start from scratch and um, then I'm gonna bring up my sticky note again I'm going to do G for grid and D for develop let's go let's see what we can do here now G for grid they don't call it grid I think they call it thumbnail view so down to T for thumbnail view yes that's right it's normally F8 I'm setting it to G for grid and then accepting that one uh, click apply and then the next one was D for develop I think that's just called image view that's right F6 set that to D D for develop develop module no Aftershots Pro doesn't really have a develop module, but that's okay. We don't really care. What else did we have in our sticky notes? We've got P for pick, X for eject, U for unpick. Right, oh, P for pick. What do they call that? I think they call that flagging. Let's have a look. Flag is pick. Yep, that's it. Set it to P. Uh, flag is reject. Yep, set that to X. That's what we're used to with Lightroom. And what else have we got here? Um, unpick, uh, what do they call that? Okay, I think they call it clear flag. Yep. So U for unpick or clear flag. So that's all we need for that one. And what else have we got? Ah, color labels. Now this one's a little bit tricky. Before we get into that, let's look at the stacking. We'll, we'll leave color labels and we'll come back to them last. So, um, Control G is what Lightroom uses to um, create a stack. So, or group things into a stack and then S is just used for rolling and unrolling a stack. Okay, let's just look for stacks. No, it's not gonna be there, yep. St stack is for creating a stack. I think that's control G. And then uh, rolling and unrolling a stack. Yep, that's just called S for stack. So that's pretty much done and we'll do color labels next. Okay, so We've still got to do our color labels. Now, as it turns out, Aftershots Pro already uses keyboard shortcuts one, two, three, four, and five to do star ratings. That is consistent with Lightroom, so we don't have to change a thing there. I'm just going through and I'm hitting some numbers on the keyboard now between one and five, inclusively. And um, as you can see, uh, it's pretty easy to um, to set the star rating as it is in Lightroom. So nothing to do there. However, we want our color labels to also be able to be set in the same way. Now, the easiest way to do that is to go into Lightroom. I'm just gonna bring Lightroom over. And then if you right click on one of the images and you go set color label, it's actually got it in list order there. So red is six, yellow is seven, Eight is green and so forth. So if I just go six, seven, eight, and nine. So 
Um, 10 is actually to unset the label, is to unset the star rating, I should say, or set the star rating to zero. So we won't use that. We'll just worry about red, yellow, green, and blue. So with that in mind, let's get back to setting up the keyboard shortcuts in Aftershop Pro. And we'll go to where the colors are. Um, unfortunately, they haven't grouped them together here. So um, if I remember correctly, blue label was nine. That leaves us, oh, that leaves us with red label, which is six. Yellow label was seven. And green label will be eight. Excellent. So now when I go into Aftershots Pro, I'm going to go six, seven, eight, and nine. There are some other color labels like purple, but I'm going to ignore those because they're not really within my keyboard shortcut paradigm, so I don't really care. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think we're done. Let's bring up our notes again. Okay, we've done, we've done all of these. So if I'm just gonna go through and do a quick test. Okay, um, let's just say I wanna look at the image for this. I wanna default develop, and that just brings it up to full, to the full image mode. I'm just gonna put some of this other nonsense away over here. And I'll G for grid, gets me back to grid view. And I can highlight all of these and say, I wanna give them a four rating star, four rating star, that's excellent. And I also wanna make them red. And I'm gonna get these ones over here and I'm going to make them blue. So I'm gonna press nine and um, that's all good. Now, how do we get all of those ratings and those colors to come across into Lightroom? So if we were to go and look at those files, you'd go in and I think you go to version. Yep. And then you go show master file location. And if I bring that across, what have we got here? Let's just look for, say, for example, image 0406CR2. 0406CR2. And we can see that some XMP files have indeed been created. Now, Bibble, or sorry, Aftershots Pro, used to be called Bibble, Aftershots Pro has actually gone and automatically created those files because I actually did something with the images, I actually touched the images. So, um, you don't necessarily need to go to the XMP menu here and go write, um, uh, write XMP files, it automatically creates those files. Um, now, I think, though, this is an important point. Let's go back here. Now, you'll see it's .cr2.xmp. Now, that's the way that Aftershot does it, but it's not the way that Lightroom does it. What Lightroom does is it drops the original file extension and then adds the XMP extension, extension and then that becomes the sidecar file. So let's go and have a look and see what we, what happens if I right click on here and say XMP, write standard XMP files, and then go back to our files and we'll have a look here. Guess what? We've now got the Adobe method of creating these XMP files where the file extension is dropped. So what we've got here apparently is a difference between Aftershot XMP files and standard XMP files. And if we look at the file system, we've got the Aftershot ones, including the original file extension and the Adobe ones, uh, leaving the original file extension out. We asked Aftershots Pro to generate this file for us. And so this is what it's done. And this is going to include information like the star rating, as well as the color label. So if I just do control F, do a text search for label, for instance. There it is. So we've got rating four, and we got 
uh, label is red. Now, you can see that they've used an XMP prefix here, so we can see that there is an identifier that is associated with XMP, and um, the business of setting a rating and setting a label is part must be part of the XMP standard, I assume. So that's all very interesting, but what does that mean? Well, it means that when we go back to Lightroom, get it? So what we can do now is we can go to Lightroom and we can say, let's get an image file that we're interested in, right click on it and say, go to folder in library, which it's already at down here. So this is, this, this is the folder here where it resides. Now I can right click on this folder and I can say synchronize folder and scan for metadata updates. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna find all of those XMP files and go, oh, hang on a minute. There's some new information here, what do you wanna do? Now the other way to do it is that um, when you're back here in Lightroom, um, these little indicators come up to say the metadata has changed externally. And then when you, um, when you click on those, Let's just select the whole bunch here. When you click on that, you say import the settings from the disk. And guess what? It brings along the star rating and it brings along the color labels um, at the same time because it's gone actually, it's actually gone out and read the XMP files. Okay. Now, you may be asking yourself, why in the heck would I want to bother doing that, Terence? Well, I think there's a good reason for it. I'm going to bring up um, Lightroom and I'm going to show you uh, what it's like working with Lightroom files. Let's just have a look what it's like working with Lightroom files. If I bring up the toolbar and I increase the thumbnail size um, and I decide I want to start flipping through my images, it doesn't exactly do it at full resolution. I have to go into develop mode really. Press D for develop. Yes, I've pressed D for develop. And I'm still waiting, 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 waiting. Now it's switched to the development module. And if I click on it, I can actually get a one-on-one -on -one preview of what the image file looks like. And um, it can be a little bit slow. Like I'm sitting here now, flicking through. You can hear my finger tapping on the keyboard. Lightroom is doing a pretty good job, but it's not really keeping up. Um, now, let's just say if I've gone and done some portraits of some people or something, which I haven't really done in this particular photo set. Oh, okay, here we go. Yes, I have. This is me just lighting up the boys with a mobile phone. Um, LED light. Now, let's just have a look here. Let's just say I decide I'm going to have a look at these images and I want to choose one but because this was low lighting conditions I'm either going to have motion blur or they're going to be out of my depth of field so I want to see which one of these images has better critical focus so I need to see sharpness around the eyes now the only way to do that in Lightroom currently is to bring it up for one on one size and then flip through the image that way Now, every time I do this, I have to wait for Lightroom to interpret the raw file. Okay? And it's time consuming. Now, the thing is, Lightroom can give you an um, approximation by just using one of its um, pre rendered previews. But even for the pre rendered preview, I still have to wait for it to load. Okay? And it, sometimes it takes almost as long. So I'm in loop mode at the moment, I'm not in the develop module. I can go back to grid mode and maybe I can increase the size of the thumbnails to help, but I'm st I still don't really have a good idea of what critical focus is. Okay. Now this same process in Bibble is a lot faster and that's why I want to use it because I come home from shooting a wedding and I've got like 2000 files sitting there and I need to quickly go through um, the files and find which images have critical focus and you know just get it sorted 
Now here's the same group of files in um, Bibble, okay? In Corel Aftershots Pro. I've got to stop calling it Bibble. I used to use Bibble and now it's Aftershots Pro. So if I double click on it, I can sit there and I can flip through it as well. Hang on a second. I'm just going to get rid of this other stuff out of the way. Righto. Um, in fact, I'm going to just use this mode here. Righty ho then. Now, I can sit here and I can flip through it. And you can see it's interpreting the raw file a hell of a lot faster than Lightroom. Okay. Look at this. Full raw file. I'm flipping through it. And you could say that I'm in development mode. All right. I can flip through any of these files really quickly and I can edit the color curves really quickly. In fact, I could even edit um, a different channel on the color curve and do color corrections if I wanted to, unlike Lightroom. I'm going to reset that. But this is my point. Aftershots Pro is one hell of a lot faster in Lightroom. So the initial phase of your post-production where you're going through and sorting a ton of images, this program is going to save you time. So you can go in here, you can do all your sorting, and then you can go into Lightroom and finish off if Lightroom is what you're used to and you're not really happy with the editing facilities that are beyond the scope of this presentation. But let's go have a look now for something that I think is really cool, okay? You've got this thing called, now I went back there before and I, I found, I thought, ah, uh, that one's probably sharper. That one's probably the sharpest one, the most interesting one. And I can zoom in either by just using the um, control alt and the mouse wheel, but there's a better way to do it. There's this thing called a spyglass. If I go view, um, they call it magnifier. All right, magnifier. I can move my cursor over any part of the image I want to inspect. And because the raw file is fully interpreted, it's going to give me a one-to-one -one, um, interpretation of what's going on. So I don't really need to zoom in. I can just basically look at this image um, in its full composition and then just inspect different parts of the image for whatever purposes I want to inspect it for. Now, here's the clincher. This is, this is so cool. This is the reason why you want to use Corel Aftershots Pro. Check this out. I'm going to go back to grid mode and it still works. I can still check critical focus even from thumbnail view. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to um, to do it with such tiny thumbnails, but there's nothing stopping me from say having thumbnails about this size, um, having a bird's eye view of it and going, oh well, that looks that looks like it's reasonably sharp and it's that's probably good, and then I can just basically go and hover my cursor over where I should be getting critical focus and I can make some decisions from a bird's eye view, literally. And I don't even have to go in to the individual image. Now the keyboard shortcut that I used to bring that up was the back tick key, which is just under the escape key on your keyboard. And uh, it's on the same key as what's known as the tilde um, but that's just a really annoying way to think about it. So you know what? I'm just going to go to preferences. I'm going to go to keyboard and I think they call it M for magnify. And I'm just going to go and change it to Z for zoom. Hey, how about that? Now I'm just hitting the Z key and I'm in checking it real, out real quick. So I'm going to be in and out of the Z key real quick. Z. Okay. That's why ladies and gentlemen, you want to be using aftershots pro for the first phase at least of your image processing. Well, I hope you learned something and um, I enjoyed giving this presentation. So um, have fun, see ya.